Hey, it's Nathan Williams with Crazy Eye Marketing. In this video, we're gonna talk about creating custom audiences within Facebook ads. Now, what is a custom audience? Well, it's an audience of people that have interacted with your business in some sort of way. So they might have visited your website or they might have engaged with an ad or a post that you made on Facebook or they might want to, might have watched a video or something like that that you posted on Facebook. So it's somebody that has engaged with you in some sort of way and they go onto one of these custom audiences and then you can put ads in front of these people on these custom audiences and that's what remarketing or retargeting is, is it's putting ads in front of people that have already engaged with your audience and you do that with custom audiences. Also, you can create lookalike audiences with these custom audiences and I have another video on that so if you want lookalike audiences as well, check out that video. But in this one, we're gonna be focused on the custom audience and so to do that, we're in our Facebook ads manager and we wanna go over to our menu and we wanna to go to audiences. And depending if you've created audiences or not before, you may have a list here like I do or you might have nothing and that's fine too. But what we wanna do is go up, come up to create audience now and so we have a couple different options. We have custom audience, lookalike audience, special ad audience, and we also have saved audience. So of course, since we're doing custom audiences in this video, we're gonna select custom audience right here. And now what we need to go ahead and do is select a custom audience source. So there's several different options here, obviously. So we have our sources, and so we have website, and that's if you've installed the pit the pixel on your website and you can create an audience of people that have browsed your website or visited certain pages on your website and so on and we'll explore this in just a minute here. You could also go ahead and upload a customer list. So if you have an email list or you have a customer list, so people that have purchased something from you, you can go ahead and upload that database of customers or subscribers into Facebook and build a custom audience with that information. You could also do it based off of app activity. So if you have an application on Facebook, you could create an audience of people that have engaged with your app. You can also do offline activity, and this is if you have you know, an offline business and people go to your store, they buy something and then they check out and they enter their, you know, their name, email address, et cetera. We can go ahead and upload that contact information into Facebook and create an audience of people that have purchased from your store, uh, even if it's offline. Then we have the Facebook sources and we have several to choose from. So there's video. So if somebody watches a, a video of yours on Facebook, you can create an audience of those people and we'll explore this later. I mean, you can also create custom audiences, people that have engaged with your Instagram business profile. So if you have an Instagram account and people are looking at your profile and engaging with it, you can go ahead and create an audience of those individuals. You can do it based off of lead form. So if you create a lead form on Facebook, and this is a type of like opt-in form that people can click on an ad and it automatically fills in their contact information and they can just click submit and basically opt in for whatever it is that you're offering. Well, you can create a custom audience of those people, of who opts in or who clicks on it, who engages with it, etc. And I actually have another video on lead form. So if this is interesting to you, link in the description down below. Same concept with events. So if somebody engages with one of your events or they register for an event, you can add them to a custom audience. We have instant experience. So this is like a little landing page that can pop up when somebody clicks on your ad. And if somebody does that, well, you can go ahead and create an audience of people that have engaged with your instant experience. Then we got Facebook page. So if somebody engages with your Facebook page, whether they visit it or look at something on there or comment on it or like it or something to that effect, you can go ahead and create an audience of those people. And we'll check this out in a minute. And then we have shopping. So if you listed your products or your catalog within Facebook, you could go ahead and create a custom audience of people that you know have been shopping around your Facebook catalog and you can remarket or retarget those individuals. And then if you're busy on the marketplace, you can go ahead and create custom audiences of people that have browsed your listings on the marketplace. So a bunch of different options and we're gonna explore several of them in this video. So you get an idea of how they work and so on. So the first one we're gonna go with is website because this is a very popular one since most people have websites and they're using ads and everything to uh, send people to their, their websites. So let's check it out for a few minutes. Now step one is to add people to your audience and then it gives us several different options here. And so we can include people who meet any of the following criteria or we could go ahead and do all. So any or all, um, you can use whichever one makes sense for the audience you're trying to create. And then you wanna go ahead and make sure you've selected the correct pixel. And then we have several different options. So we can do like all website visitors, people who visited specific web pages, visitors by time spent. And then 
If you have events on your pages or your website, you can go ahead and select people that have performed certain events. Page view, general event, click event, view content, lead, watch video, form, add to cart, etc. So depending on what type of events you have on your website, you can go ahead and add those people to a custom audience. Now for the sake of example, I'm just gonna go with all website visitors right now. And I'm gonna go with the, the past 14 days and the limit is 180 days, so you can reach out to 180 days. And then we have a couple other options like including more people and excluding people. Now, I don't use these two options that much when creating a custom audience because I can include and exclude people when I create my ad set. And I'll explain this later on in this video. We'll go in and set up an ad set and I'll show you how you can include and exclude custom audiences from the ad set. So that's where I do my inclusions and exclusions is at the ad set level. But just for the sake of example, you could include people that have also done different actions or viewed different pages. So if you wanted to you know, capture everyone that triggered the lead event in the past seven days, you could go ahead and do that. And so if that's something that might be relevant to you, then you can go ahead and add that. Now you might notice also that a new option popped up here called refine by. So we can also refine by URL, uh, frequency, and device. So if we hover over this little I thing, it tells us what that means. So specify a URL for your event. Tip, you can also add parameters to your events. Example, purchases that total a certain amount to refine your audience by this parameter. So like the title says, it's allowing us to further refine what we what we mean by lead. So maybe we want leads that have only opted in for this lead magnet, but not this other lead magnet, right? So we could go ahead and uh, define it with our URL frequency. So frequency allows you to specify the number of times an event happened. So maybe we only want people that have been be opted in to be leads twice or more or something like that. So we want those really highly engaged leads or something like that. And then we can also refine by device. So if you want to refine by the device that people are using, you can go ahead and do that as well. And as you'll notice, the refine by only impacts this second option right here. It does not impact the top option. So that's just something to note and be aware of. Um, I'm going to close this out not real quick. We could also go ahead and exclude people if we want to. So it could be targeting all website visitors up here, but then exclude everybody that's already purchased something. So we could exclude all people that have purchased stuff in the last 180 days. And then basically we're targeting everybody that's visited our website, but has not purchased anything. But again, I tend to do my inclusions and exclusions at the ad set level. So I would not create an audience like this personally, but I just wanted to show you something you could go ahead and do. You could also refine by again and select different options in there. So just for the sake of example, I'm gonna close this out real quick and say, and so I named my audience demo all website visitors 14 days. And I always put the number of days that my audience is like active in the, the name of it. So that way I can easily identify and find the particular audience that I'm looking for. So that's, that's just a little tip. I recommend putting the number of days in there because otherwise it's, it's not that easy to find. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and create audience now. And we get a message that our custom audience was created. So awesome. I'll just go ahead and click done for now. And now I wanna go ahead and create another custom audience real quick with my website information. So I'll go to website. And this time I'm gonna to go to people who purchased. So purchase. And I'm gonna do last 180 days. And I've named this audience demo purchase event 180 days. And now I'm gonna go ahead and create the audience now. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit done. So I've now created two custom audiences based off of my website data. And again, Facebook gets that website data because the pixel is installed on my website and it's pushing all the information back into Facebook. And again, video down below if you need help installing the Facebook pixel on your website. All right, so let's go ahead and look at another custom audience we can go ahead and create. So again, create audience and we'll look at customer list right now. And so again, this is so you can upload a list of leads. So like an email list, or you can upload a list of buyers, or if you have other contact information in a list format, you can go ahead and upload this information. And basically you upload a CSV or text file, and then you make sure you include at least one main identifier. So like an email number, email address, sorry, email address or phone number. Um, also you could update, upload first name, last name, city, state, country, zip, date of birth, year of birth, gender, age, etc. And the more information that you're able to upload, so the more identifiers you provide, the better Facebook can go ahead and match the, the people you've uploaded with their, their database, their users, right? So that's how it works. Facebook takes all the information you upload and it goes out and figures out who, who that information belongs to and matches those people up and puts them into your custom audience. Now, one thing that's very cool about this 
is if you do have customer information and you know how much people have purchased, like their lifetime value, you can include the lifetime value amount in your list that you upload and that allows Facebook to create an even better custom audience. As you can start to see like what type of person spends the most money, like what type of demographics, interests, behaviors, et cetera, is spending the most money with your business. So that can be very beneficial, especially when you start creating lookalike audiences. The more information you can provide to Facebook, the better. And if you need help with like the template, you can download a list template right here or see formatting guidelines. Or if you use MailChimp, you can go ahead and import your information straight from MailChimp but the rest of it's pretty self-explanatory basically you go through these steps right here and select what's relevant and then you just upload your CSV or text file right into this field click upload file Facebook goes out matches your contact information with what they have and builds your custom audience for you so it's pretty straightforward once you have your list you just go through these simple steps and boom you have a custom audience so that's very handy and it's a custom audience we use a lot now let's come back into custom audiences and I'm going to go ahead and skip over app activity as I don't have any applications so it's very hard to demonstrate it. And then we have offline activity and this is a little bit more advanced as we have to go ahead and configure offline activity tracking and I'll have another video on that so link in the description down below if you're looking for offline tracking. But now we'll get into video so let's go to video real quick and check it out. So now what we need to do is go ahead and select the engagement and we click into this little field here and it gives us several options. So people who watch at least three seconds of your video, 10 seconds of your video, at least 15 seconds of your video, 25% of your video, 50%, 75%, 95%, etc. So you can go ahead and select what's relevant for you and who you're trying to target. Of course, the longer somebody sticks around watching your video, you know, the more highly qualified they are. So, you know, the 50 plus percent video watchers is probably like the better audience to create. However, if you're trying to go for volume or something like that, well then obviously you'll select, you know, the lower amounts. Typically, I just go with the 15 per, or the 15 seconds as that means they've chosen to stick around a little bit longer to watch your video. So, that's what I typically go with, but of course, cho choose what's relevant for you. And then what we need to do is choose video. So, we come in here and we can go ahead and select it based off of the campaign or Facebook page or Instagram business profile or the video ID. Typically, I just go with Facebook page. And we come in here, navigate to your page. And from here, you go ahead and select whatever videos you want it to include in that audience. So I might come in here and be like, okay, I want this video, this video, and this video right here. So these three videos I want to use to create my audience. And I can go ahead and hit confirm now. And so now people who have either completed or viewed at least 15 seconds of your video through play, and it's these three videos right here. And if I wanna add more videos, I can go ahead and click edit if I want to and be like, okay, I actually wanna add these two videos as well. So I can hit confirm now. And if I want to, I can take it a step further and click into here again and be like, I also want people that have watched 95% of this video right here and hit confirm. So now I have a combination. So people that have watched 15 or more seconds of these videos or 95% of this video. So you can kind of mix and match how you wanna go ahead and create this audience. Now with video, you can target in a maximum of 365 days. I don't know why the other one's only 180 and this one's 365, but hey, it is what it is. I'm just gonna say 14 days and then I'll go ahead and name my audience and then go ahead and create my audience and next and done. All right, so let's go back in here and create another custom audience and check it out. So we have Instagram business profile. Let's go into here real quick. And in order to create this type of audience, you do need to go ahead and connect your Instagram account to your Facebook account. And I have another video on that as well. So link in the description down below on how to connect your Instagram account to your Facebook account. But once that's done, we have several different options here. So people who engage with your business or people who visited your business profile, people who engage with any post or ad, people who sent a message to your business profile, people who saved any post or ad. So you can of course select what's ever relevant for you. Again, same options of include, exclude, etc. So we don't have to cover that again, but I'll just say 14 days that they've engaged with my Instagram profile. So let me go ahead and name this real quick. And now I'm gonna go ahead and create my audience and done. And let's create another one. So create audience and custom audience. And we have lead form here. So let's go into here. And again, I have another video on lead forms that goes into more details, but I just wanna point out these options since this is a custom audience video. So we can go ahead and choose the page that we're targeting. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. 
And we can also select which forms we want to go ahead and target. So if you have different forms, you could go ahead and select whichever one you want to, or you can select multiples if that makes sense to do so. So now I'm targeting both of the lead forms that I have on my page. And then we have another drop down. So anyone who opened this form, people who opened but didn't submit the form, people who opened and submitted the form. For this particular one, I'm going with people who opened but didn't submit the form. And I'll do the last 14 days and I'll go ahead and name my audience. And I'll go ahead and create my audience now and done. And let's go ahead and create another custom audience. So come in here, we have events now. And so this works quite similarly to the lead form. We come in here, we select whichever page we're using and select it. You can go ahead and select specific events if you have any that you wanna select. Uh, you can also hit this drop down. So people who responded going or interested, people who have responded going, people who have responded interested, and the list continues. So you can go ahead and read that. I'm just gonna leave it blank and I'm not gonna create a custom audience of event people this time, but I think you understand the concept of how it all works at this point. You select which page, which event, and then you select these options down here. And that is pretty much it for that. So let's close out of there. Let's create another custom audience. Uh, we got instant experience, so same concept as the other ads. So you come in here, you select your page, and then you select what type of engagement that they had with your instant experience, select the days, and name it, and so on. So same concept, pretty self-explanatory, but at this point, uh, Facebook page, let's come into here. And so here we go ahead and select which page we wanna go ahead and create an audience based upon. And then we have people who engage with your page, anyone who visited your page, engaged with any post or ad, clicked on any call to action button, sent a message, saved any of your pages, posts, and so on. So I'm just gonna go anyone who engaged with my page in the last 14 days, and I'll go ahead and name it and create my audience and done. And now let's come back up here and see what else we got. So we got custom audience. So we have shopping and marketplace listings. Now I don't have any catalog connected and I don't have any marketplace listings. So I can't really demonstrate those for you. But if you're taking advantage of the shopping or catalog feature and also the marketplace listings, I imagine creating audiences is just like creating any of these other custom audiences. Basically, once you understand how custom audiences work, you know, creating them is pretty simple. So we've created a bunch of custom audiences and we went through and demonstrated them. And now I'll show you how you actually like use them. So we, let's come back out here to our ads manager. And what we want to do is hit create now. And I'm cur currently in the quick creation mode, but I'm going to switch over to guided creation. So if you want to follow along, you can switch over to guided creation. And I want to fly through these settings real quick so we can get to the ad set and in particular the audience selection because that's where we're going to use our custom audiences. So I'm just going to select traffic and I'm not even going to name it. We're going to hit continue and I'm going to scroll on down here to audiences. So here's where you can go ahead and use the custom audiences that we've created. So I named all mine demo. And so I can easily go ahead and add them. So I got engage with Facebook page in the last 14 days, uh, engage with form in the last 14 days, engage with my Instagram profile, watch the video, and all website visitors. So right here is what I was talking about with the inclusions and exclusion exclusions. So here I'm including all these people, right? So I'm targeting people that have engaged with my Facebook page or they've engaged with a form or watched a video or visited my Instagram prof profile or visited my website, right? So that's inclusion, including all those people that have engaged with me in some sort of way in the last 14 days. And then I can go ahead and exclude right there by clicking that exclude option. And so I wanna go ahead and exclude people that have purchased in the last four or 180 days, right? So they triggered the purchase event in the last 180 days, I wanna exclude them from my advertising efforts because they're already a buyer and I don't need them to buy again, at least for the sake of example here. So now hopefully you can see how the inclusions and exclusions work with the custom audiences. Again, I don't do it when I'm building my custom audience. I do, the, do it when I set up my audience targeting at the ad set level. And so this tends to keep things nice and clean and organized and also helps so you don't have to create a ton of different custom audiences based off of inclusions and exclusions and all that stuff because you can do it right here. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. Of course, if you have questions, leave them down in the comment section below. I'm here to help you out. And if you did find this video helpful, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.